Let's talk about the board games we find on The Sopranos. As with most things on The Sopranos, it's not just about what they are, but about what they symbolize or represent. So without further ado, let's get started. First, Scrabble. Let's see. Ah, let's play Scrabble. You'd be surprised how good your grandmother is. Most, if not all of you probably already know this, but Scrabble is a word game in which two to four players score points by placing tiles, each with a single letter, onto a game board that's divided into a grid of squares, and the tiles must form words that are included in a standard dictionary. Some skills that would help someone in a Scrabble game include vocabulary, spelling, strategy, counting. I like when Livia says, you'd be surprised how good your grandmother is, because really she is great at communications, both verbal and nonverbal, which we see over the course of this season, especially with Junior. But sometimes it's better to not communicate. Like in this case, when AJ told Livia that Tony was seeing a psychiatrist. Sometimes loose lips sink ships. And what are those words made of? Letters, just like in Scrabble. It's the therapy. We're learning how to communicate. And speaking of other people who aren't very good at communicating, we have Jackie April Jr. playing this game with Meadow in season three, episode 11, Pine Barrens. And it's ironic that in the scene right before, Tony and Carmela are at therapy and Tony says that they've been communicating better. Not really, but just a funny transition. I know Spanish. Spanish. Oblique. Oblique. Indirect, not straightforward. Come on, you're in college. Not an English major. Next, checkers. In checkers, the primary objective is to get rid of all your opponent's pieces. While in chess, the target or the objective is to capture or check the rival king. So think about all the similarities and the symbolism here with the Sopranos. In checkers, the pieces can only be moved in a diagonal direction. Each player begins the game with 12 pieces, and all pieces are of the same type. So there are not the pawns, the knights, the bishops, the kings, the queens. They're all the same status. In this way, checkers is very different from the mafia, because in the mafia, rank and status and position is paramount, as opposed to checkers when they're all the same in status. But checkers isn't just a random game of luck. It requires skill and strategy and making different calculations to get to the right move that can help you eliminate your opponent. Sounds familiar, huh? You're not going to jump me? What? I'm open here. I'll have to king you. Fuck it, I don't want to play. I don't really want to either. In this scene here, it makes me think of the fact that sometimes there's just so much going on that you don't have the strength or motivation to try and play the game, whatever the game is, in this case, checkers, including here for Bobby and Junior. Next, chess. Would you ask Deborah to come in here, please? May I just point out, all she's ever done is background checks. Where'd you start? Chess is all about skill and tactics. There's no chance. Each player knows exactly what pieces they're getting. The board's the same every time. The only difference are the two players who are sitting across from one another. Chess is a board game with each player controlling an army of chess pieces in their color, with the objective being to checkmate the opponent's king. No, your pawn can only move two spaces on the first move. Sorry. Yeah. Now let's talk about check and checkmate. When a king is under immediate attack, it is said to be in check. There are only three ways to get a king out of check. By capturing the checking piece, by moving the king, or by blocking the check. I win again. I see you should have played that out. See, you should have played that out. 
That's the only way you're going to learn. There's no shortcut to the top, even if your dad used to be there. Next, the Ouija board. A Ouija board, which is also known as a spirit board or a talking board, is a flat board marked with the letters of the Latin alphabet, the numbers zero to nine, the words yes, no, occasionally hello and goodbye, along with various symbols and graphics. While using a Ouija board, a person touches a small heart-shaped piece of wood or plastic as a movable indicator to spell out messages. Now what's the purpose of the game? To enable faster communication with spirits. Of course, what does this make you think of right away? For me, I think of Polly going to see the psychic. And in an even grander sense, so much of The Sopranos deals with death, whether it's death by natural causes, like disease, getting whacked, things like that. So I think this idea of being able to communicate with the dead, not only is it powerful in a sense of being able to talk to people who've perished, people who may be greatly mourned by those who are still living, but also this idea of people who are dead being able to communicate and talk. A lot of the time, People are taken out in the mob so that they don't talk, so that they can't communicate and tell people what they know. Here with this, it's kind of flipping that upside down. Though, of course, that wouldn't actually be used in a court of law. But it's just interesting to think about the idea of people who are dead being able to communicate. Because that would kind of suck for the mafia and other people who kill people to take them out and make sure that their stories are never told. I included this part of the scene here, too. Because although they're not playing with the Ouija board game anymore, they're trying to quote unquote summon spirits, or at least that's what AJ's telling them. And then he mentions something that makes me think of Polly again with his purgatory reference. This is what AJ says. The most important thing is that you keep your eyes closed during the ceremony. Because if you open them, whatever spirits we're speaking to will permanently remain trapped between worlds forever. W waves are smashing against the boat? <laughs> of course, Monopoly. Taking a game of skill and making it only about luck? That's what Bobby says anyway. What are you doing? It goes in the bank. We play the free parking rule. What free parking rule? Money from community chests and chance goes into the middle. Whoever lands our free parking gets the money. You show me that in the rules. Technically, it isn't in the rules, but a lot of people play it that way. It adds a whole new level of excitement to the game. I like how they include Nika in this scene, because to me, it's almost like an illustration of, okay, these are the adults here in her life. Presumably, she will be learning from them. Now, I wonder which player Nika would be most like at the table. Bobby or Janice? Both of them? Neither? Which one? And what will that mean for Nika's future? Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this latest video.